Good morning, YouTube. Um, Welcome to the Reptile Barn. I just wanted to check on our eggs today. Um, our first clutch from Bahumat to Muriel. No, Bahumat to Nagi Luna. Same thing, it's a pied. Garbage. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. Today, I'm just going to do a few things. I'm going to check on some eggs real quick in the incubator and uh, talk about a couple of thoughts I've had, and that's all. So let's check out these eggs first. All right, so that's what I was looking for. To see all that condensation on top. These eggs are really breathing. Move those out of the way. These are just clean water bowls. I'm going to try and peel off this present seal without dripping all over the eggs. Not going to be successful, so I'm going to go get a tissue. I'm going to dry these off. That's okay. That's what usually happens. Yeah, see some some water definitely dripped on there. So I'll be right back. Just gonna gently dry these off. Now we are on day 46 of incubation. So there are basically fully formed little snakelings in these eggs already. Just want to make sure there's no water. Don't worry guys, it's like 85 degrees in this room. So these are not going to be affected by some drastic temperature change or anything. They're tough eggs anyways, they can handle some temperature fluctuation. We incubate at 89 degrees, but uh, I do check on the eggs periodically so they get a little bit of fluctuation, but that's just fine. I'm even going to dry off a little bit of this condensation on the sides. Yeah, so hopefully our eggs, for some reason, our eggs tend to hatch, or at least pip, a few days earlier than most people talk about. People say, you know, 55 days is normal. I even hear some people say 60 days. We generally are pipping it uh, day 52 or 53. 53 is more normal for us. Uh, we do have some go longer, obviously, but that's, that's kind of what we're used to here is day 53. That would put us at, oh, Monday, Tuesday, next week. So uh, hopefully in about a week, we will have some little tiny piebald heads poking out of these eggs, right? It was a hat to a, to a visual, so they shouldn't all be piebalds, but hopefully we get some, right? Um, I want to point a few things out. These two um, had slight calcium deficiencies on the end. Some people call those boob eggs, right? Um, and you can see they look all gnarly, but these eggs are totally fine. There is nothing wrong with these eggs. Um, again, the shells are a little bit discolored in a few places, but these are Overall, these are very healthy, happy eggs. I'm not concerned about these at all. I expect all six to hatch just fine. Sometimes when you have a big area like this that covers, you know, half the egg, sometimes the hatchlings are too small and they're just, they don't thrive or they don't quite make it. Other times they're fine, but they're very, very small. But this one, this is kind of a typical boob egg, if you want to call it that. And uh, it looks just fine to me. Uh, now you'll notice that these eggs are dimpled. They, they're they're all uh, sinking in. That's a good thing. The hatchling inside is using up his yolk. He's using up his water supply. Um, so the eggs are starting to dimple in. Uh, obviously, when they're first laid, they're nice and plump and round. They don't look like this. But these look great. They're turning soft. That's another thing that you can kind of look for. Um, the last two weeks of incubation, the eggs lose some of their firm leathery consistency and they turn uh, softer and that's an adaptation so that the hatchling has an easier time getting out right um, because he has just a tiny little egg tooth that he has to slice his way free with um, we can give assistance as needed of course but in the wild that's obviously not an option so yeah this is what Day 46 looks like of egg incubation for a ball python. Very excited. Again, this was a 
cinnamon mahogany het pied male to a visual pied female. So we could get all sorts of really cool stuff out of this. Let me just grab some more press and seal. I'm going to pause here for a minute so I can use two hands. I'll be right back. There we go. I just got to smooth that down, make sure it's all sealed. Um, the other purpose of doing this, of course, uh, as most of you probably know, is oxygen exchange. These eggs do breathe, of course. There's a living creature inside there. Um, they will use up their oxygen. I actually do not fully seal off these boxes. I poke tiny holes in each side so that uh, a little bit of air exchange can occur. Um, I just It makes me nervous to seal it off 100%. Um, but I do like almost all of the humidity and oxygen to be trapped in there. Um, but that requires me to occasionally open it up and uh, get them some fresh air. Dry them off if needed. So I will open up the incubator again. Okay, the only other thing I wanted to bring up real quick, nothing to do with the eggs, um, it's just been on my mind a lot. Um, one of the very next animals we want to purchase here at the Reptile Barn, we want to get into the Azanthic gene for ball pythons, right? Uh, we've always loved it. We've seen combo after combo after combo that we just think is incredible. We've just never gotten into it, and there's kind of one main reason. So, um, those of you who know of JD Constriction, basically, I would say uh, there's nobody in the ball python world producing nicer azanthics than, than they are. Incredible snakes. Absolutely incredible. I hope you all look them up. It's got a great website. Um, if you've ever, ever heard of the Stormtrooper, that's a JD Constriction snake, right? John Dagg, I think his name is. <clears throat> so, uh, he has spectacular animals. I would love to get our Xanthic stock from him. However, he uses SK Xanthics, right? The Snake Keeper line, which are gorgeous. They're beautiful. But for whatever reason, the VPI line of Xanthics, which is not compatible, is the one that is much more common in the hobby. So I kind of have to try and make this weird decision where normally I'd go right for the one that I like the best, right? And that's what I usually do when we buy new ball pythons, right? We have a bunch of projects that are kind of, you know, random, not necessarily the most popular. We got into citrus ghosts, which are super uncommon, instead of the much more common orange ghosts, right? Um, however, with the Azanthics, we really want to have snakes that are going to have the widest appeal. So from a business standpoint, which is important, it would make more sense to go with VPI as Xanthics, right? It's just easier to market them. Way more people have them. More, more people work with them. There's more of them for sale all over the place. Go on Fauna or Morph Market or Kingsnake and look up Xanthics. 80% of them, it seems like, are VPIs, right? That doesn't mean we couldn't have success with the SK Xanthics, of course, but I think it would be just one extra little challenge in marketing them, right? It's not hard for JD Constriction because he's known as the best of the best of the best. You know, everyone who wants a nice Xanthic can go to him and know they're getting the best. But most people, if they're not going to go to him, they want a VPI. I don't know why that is. I don't think they're any better or worse, necessarily. But uh, they had the reputation for a long time of not browning out as much as adults. So that might be why they kind of took over as the premier Xanthic. So I want to hear from you guys. Should I go with the SK Xanthics that are from the breeder that I really would like to work with that I think look the best, they look amazing. Nothing against the VPI Xanthics, they also can be beautiful. Um, but uh, should I go with kind of my the one I'm most excited about? Or should I go with the one that 
I think makes the most business sense? Or do you think that my understanding of the business side of that isn't correct? Uh, would I be just fine with the SK as antics? So let me know what you think I should do um, because we've gone back and forth four or five times and every time we're almost decided we flip-flop so we haven't bought an Xanthic yet and we really want to get into that project so please let me know your thoughts on SK Xanthics versus VPI Xanthics those of you who have them let me know what what you think um, I haven't actually seen them in person SK Xanthics right I've only seen pictures so if any of you have them let me know how, how do they look as adults I only ever see baby pictures right it's one of the curses of the ball python hobby um, so please let me know what you think on this subject I really would appreciate any input at all because I'm not coming to a decision easily <laughs> it's not again it's not super important it's not life or death but uh, I've put off getting an awesome snake for a long time because of this issue so let me know and uh, hopefully you enjoyed seeing those eggs and maybe uh, learning a little bit about how to take care of them one random thought I've had as I'm taking care of these ball python eggs, I've talked a lot with Brandon at Canadian Cold Blood <coughs> that we got uh, our first tree monitor from, that we're going to get some more from. He um, goes all out for egg care for his monitors. I mean, really, he said that there are times where he is changing their substrate daily because um, one of the issues that people have with tree monitor eggs is over uh, too much humidity basically too wet and people lose a lot of their eggs it's kind of uh, the bane of breeding tree monitors lots of people get them to breed lots of people get viable eggs and then at the end of incubation they die right before they are hatched and and they get too wet is what he's saying right so he meticulously fanatically cares for these eggs makes sure that uh, they look at all too firm, like they're stretched at all. He dries them out, um, swaps the, the substrate so that uh, there's not so much water in there. If they look like they're dimpling too much, basically he wants them to look like they looked when they were laid, the entire incubation. Anyways, so I don't know, it's just been interesting looking at the care of different species eggs. It's not just a matter of put them in some vermiculite, stick them in an incubator at the correct temperature for that species. It's not that simple. You have to watch for mold. There's things you can do to combat mold. You don't have to just throw your clutch away. Um, if an egg, if you accidentally rupture the egg, it's not a lost cause necessarily. We hatched an egg last year that ruptured um, pretty badly, and uh, we pretty much just dried it off and stuck a few. Uh, it's not band aids. What are they? The little you know little patch things, and it was fine. It went full term, hatched just perfectly fine. So. Uh, Egg care is something I've been thinking more and more about as we've been getting into more and more species, and it's not just going to be our typical ball python egg care anymore. Anyway, so thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate all your comments, and until next time, we're the Reptile Barn.